Hey there folks, my name is Peter and I just got off the snap-on truck for the very first time. So in a previous video I mentioned that while I have been buying some snap-on tools, in fact I did my first snap-on tool unboxing a few videos ago, uh, I had never been on an actual snap-on truck. Now for folks like in the industry, you might be saying to yourself like, oh, like what's the big deal? It's just a truck with a bunch of tools on it. Uh, and you're right, it is sort of silly, but uh, it was something that I wanted to do because while buying the tools online is okay, uh, first of all, the Snap-on website, frankly, kind of sucks. Uh, that's one. Two, you don't get that sort of personal service. Um, you're not able to ask questions. If you have a warranty item, something that you want to bring in and exchange, it's much harder to do, right? You have to sort of mail it into them and go through this whole process. There's no promotions, right? Like, uh, I'll see videos recommended to me on YouTube where it's like, hey, here's the Snap-on monthly flyer, and this month the, prior, the promotion is X. Um, but then you go on the website, and it's the same price it's always been. So what I wanted to do was establish a relationship with a dealer. Uh, again, going back to this idea of maybe treating myself to some Snap-on tools once a quarter. Uh, of course, as you can see, as, as evidence with these videos, it's been a little bit more than once a quarter as of late. Uh, but you all seem to enjoy it. I know I certainly do. Um, so we'll see where this takes us. This certainly will be the last purchase for at least a little while. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff on my wish list, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So before I get into how I found the dealer, what I bought, and what my overall experience was, if you're into EDC tools or do-it-yourself projects, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like the video. It, of course, helps out what is a very small channel. Uh, and while we're inching ever so close to 1,000 subscribers, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. So I thank you very much for your support, uh, and let's get right into the video. So the other day I called Snap-on. They have a phone number listed on their website, a few rings, a couple prompts. Uh, I was directed to a US-based customer service representative named Bob. Uh, and I said, you know, Bob, this is probably a weird request, but here's the deal. I'm a DIYer. I'm not a professional in any sense of the word, uh, but I appreciate Snap-on tools, and while I've been buying them on the website, which is fine, uh, I was hoping to get onto a truck and just sort of check some things out. Bob said, you know, we're not allowed to give you the name uh, or the phone number of any uh, dealers in your area. But he said what you could do is if you have a relationship with say a car dealership, call them up and tell them to ask the service department, hey guys, when does the Snap-on truck visit us? Because if those folks will give you the information of the truck, then you can go visit them all you want. So that's exactly what I did. When I bought my, uh, my F-150 two years ago now, uh, I worked with a great sales rep at a dealership local to where I live. Uh, so I texted him, I just said, hey, uh, do you know when the Snap-on truck comes? And he said, you know what, I don't, but let me go talk to the service department, I'll let you know. It just so happened that I texted him on a Friday and the Snap-on guy came on a Friday. So anyway, he was able to give me the guy's name, the, the, the Snap-on dealer's name as well as his phone number, um, and then I texted him. I said, hey, I'm a DIYer, uh, I've always wanted to get on a Snap-on truck, I have a few things in mind that I'm looking to purchase. Um, what does your schedule look like? And he said, well, I'm not available on the weekends, nor am I available on Mondays, but from Tuesday through Friday, I'm all around this area. Uh, just let me know when you wanna come and I'll let you know where I am. I said, wonderful. So I texted him Friday afternoon. I said, hey, I'm, I'm just headed out. Uh, whereabouts are you? He told me where he was at the dealership and I pulled up. I saw the big snap on truck. My heart started racing. Uh, and again, I realized that this is all crazy, right? But uh, that was my experience. I saw the truck, I walked up to it, and uh, the door was closed at the time. I was a little nervous, is he really in there? But he was, and he opened the door. Uh, there was a mechanic on board. They were just leaving with their recent purchase, uh, and I stepped on. Now, I was a complete kid in a candy store when I got on this thing. I have watched so many videos about trucks and the dealers on the trucks, um, how nice they are to people, how much inventory the trucks have, because it seems like there's quite a, uh, quite a spectrum with respects to how much inventory they're gonna have and then how sort of interested in talking to you they will really be. But from the second I stepped on the truck, I knew that of all those videos I watched, this truck had a ton of inventory. Moreover, the dealer was super nice. I asked him a hundred questions uh, because I really am just curious and I, and I want to learn some stuff. So, for example, I said, like, hey, what's the deal with Bluepoint? Like, what, what, what is Bluepoint? Uh, and he explained to me that Bluepoint is a subsidiary of Snap-on. And basically, when you bring a broken Snap-on tool back to your dealer to do an exchange, uh, they send those tools back to headquarters. They melt them down and they make new Snap-on tools, but they're rebranded as Bluepoint. So they're basically the second iteration of the tool. 
I said, oh, that's super interesting. I asked him about Knipex. I said, like, hey, why do you guys sell Knipex? Is that not a competitor? And he said, well, Knipex has some patents that Snap-on doesn't and will never have. Um, so we view it as a sort of symbiotic relationship where we can sell their stuff. I can warranty it for you just as good as, uh, as they can. Um, and it's all just a one-stop shop. I said, oh, okay. He said, yeah, like at this dealership, they work in a lot of German made cars. The Knipex pliers work a little bit better just because they're made in Germany and they're made for uh, that type of vehicle, just so in terms of sizing and whatnot. I said, oh, I, I never would have thought of that. So I asked him a million questions. Um, and like I said, he answered everything. He was super cool. Uh, and then I was just perusing the truck. Now here's the thing. Although I have a wish list that is many miles long, um, really when I got on the truck for the day, what I wanted most was to start building my collection of snap-on ratcheting screwdrivers, right? I've got a Husky ratcheting screwdriver right now in my Vito Pro Pack, which I did a video on if you wanna check it out. Uh, that thing has worked well, uh, but I'm ready to upgrade and I want the snap-on for my toolbox. Now, one thing I wasn't really prepared for was when you go on the website, every color, every permutation is available, assuming it's not backordered, of course. Um, so you don't have to worry about like, okay, well, I have this ratcheting screwdriver, but they only have it in red. They pretty much have every color. Uh, but on the truck, not the same, right? There's obviously limited amount of space for him to store all of his inventory. So he's got to be sort of picky and choosy about what he stocks, right? Now, like I said, this was a pretty stocked truck. Uh, and he did have ratcheting handle screwdrivers, but he didn't have the color that I wanted. So ultimately I, I opted against the ratcheting screwdriver, but let me talk you through what I did buy and then I'll get to the hat and the sweatshirt and all that stuff. Because truthfully, I had no idea any of that was coming to me. So the very first thing that I picked up was this screwdriver set. Now, here's the deal. I have screwdrivers. The, the screwdriver is the quintessential tool. Like if you're only gonna have one thing, you're probably gonna have a screwdriver. Maybe you'll have a hammer. Uh, maybe a set of pliers, but a number two Phillips and a flathead screwdriver can get you in and out of a lot of different situations. Now, of course, in my Vito Pro Pack, I've got some insulated screwdrivers because, you know, around the house, if I'm going to carry that thing, maybe I'm replacing an outlet, who knows. At the workbench, I do have Milwaukee screwdrivers up on my wall. Um, they're in a packout holder, which, by the way, I, I really don't like and I wouldn't recommend buying that specific packout item but I digress. I do have those, but in my Husky workbench itself, uh, I've just got a couple scra uh, crappy Amazon screwdrivers. So not something I'm super happy with, certainly not something that I expect will last a lifetime, and certainly not something that I get excited about making use of. And just as an item of note, if you didn't have a chance to watch my previous video with my first Snap-on unboxing, uh, that's really what this is about for me. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but I wanna come out to the garage and work on stuff and feel excited to do so, right? So I know when I grab some of these Snap-on tools, uh, it's going to get me excited. I'm gonna to say to myself, okay, well, I've got this number two Phillips. What number two Phillips screws can I find to tighten or loosen or what have you, right? With the Amazon stuff, listen, at the end of the day, Will they perform the job just about the same way? Yes, right? Um, but if you view it that way, you view tools as a means to an end, right? I don't view it that way. I view the tools as the end, right? Uh, and when I told my grandmother that, she said, oh, so they're toys. I said, oh, kind of. Uh, I guess they're toys for, for me, but uh, certainly I, I don't mean to suggest that they are for everyone. Uh, but anyway, that being said, I saw this kit. Uh, I had this on my wish list on the uh, Snap-on website. I didn't really go in there looking for this. I didn't remember how much it cost. Um, and of the videos I watched, they said, you know, do you, you, you don't ask the price of tools on the Snap-on truck. Now, I don't know if that's really true. It seems sort of silly, but I abided by that for this trip. I didn't ask what anything cost, um, but I was trying to keep a mental inventory and basically whatever you think the, the thing costs, just multiply it by two and you'll be okay. Um, so I put this up there because I said, you know what? Let this be the last screwdriver set that I ever buy. It's got every single screwdriver that you could need, all different handle sizes. The, in, the instant grips are one of the most praised things about Snap-on. And so I said, you know what? This is it. We're just gonna pick it up in the color that I want. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stick with the green. Uh, I did get a red plier, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But of course, for me to open this, I have to make this video. So I haven't even had a chance to play with these at all yet. Uh, but we are gonna do that right now and just see how they feel in the hand. So I'll pick up this one because this is again the sort of quintessential. Um, so it's got the impact grip, the sort of triangular design. Oh, that really does. You know, again, 
Whether I'm buying, uh, when I bought a watch, I watched every video on YouTube about the particular watch I wanted. When I bought that truck, I knew more about that truck than the guy who sold it to me because I watched every single video that existed about that make, model, year truck. With these tools, I mean, I couldn't tell you how many hours of videos I have spent watching uh, on these screwdrivers, snap-on tools, general toolboxes, you name it. Um, and to be clear, I think this lives up to the hype. The way that this feels in the hand is everything everybody said that it did on the internet. Um, obviously, I love the design, I love the color. That's the, uh, that's the flathead version. And then here we've got the, uh, the number two Phillips, made in the USA. Uh, they do have the marking on the back, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, actually, this is a number three Phillips, excuse me. Uh, they do have that marking here as well. So, looks like our number two is right here. Yeah, that's our number two Phillips. So, um, I've got number three, number two, number one, I, and then it came with a few hexes. This is, oh, excuse me, not hexes. This, this is a T30. This is a T25. And I'm assuming we go from like 15 and a 10 maybe, something like that. So, a few thin handle ones as well. I realize I'm, I'm making a mess. But these are the little thin ones that they give you. So, this is a number one Phillips. Nice small handle if you're going to do uh, some smaller work. Uh, and then the smallest T handle they give you is, is in fact a T15. So just super cool. Of course, one of the defining characteristics of these tools is uh, both the instinct grip, but also this little nut here. You can throw a wrench on it if you have to. Um, and you should be able to get out of whatever jam you find yourself in. So. We've got the Instinct Handle Snap-Ons. Uh, this was my big purchase of the day, but of course I bought a few other things. So I uh, wanted to get this open. I'll throw it in the box. You know, as far as the sort of blow molded case that it came in, I'm going to try and get it in the uh, toolbox just like this. Um, it's one of those things though that if it takes up too much space, which sometimes can happen, maybe we'll get rid of it. But for now, I like it. So once I had this, I kept looking around the... Uh, the truck, and like I said, I really went on there for ratcheting screwdriver, uh, which I, I asked him about right away, he didn't have it. Uh, and then I also said like, hey look, I'm looking to build my collection of green handle pliers. Uh, and it turns out he didn't have very many of them, at least so I thought. So I'm perusing, I'm perusing, uh, I come across these numbers. Now, these are another thing that's on my uh, Snap-on wish list. So this is their neck light, right? But you can actually take these out and they're magnetic, so you can stick them uh, to whatever you want. These function as independent lights, so you can turn just this one on, just this one on, or both. And then the charger that it comes with will actually allow you to charge both of these at the same time. And I've seen videos of people wearing them on their neck, uh, but also up top here, which seems pretty cool. As I see myself in the video, I'm like, man, what am I, an astronaut? Once I saw these hanging from the ceiling, I said, you know what, I'm here. Let's do it. Uh, so I picked these up, which I'm pretty excited about. I think for me, in a lot of ways, this is gonna replace the sort of stereotypical headlamp. Um, I don't know what it is about the headlamps. I never feel like I can find uh, the button or the setting that I'm really most interested in. These are super simple, right? You put them on, there's one button, they're on, one button, they're off, uh, and I really appreciate that. As far as lumens and battery life and all this stuff, there's tons of videos that get into the tech specs. If that's what you're interested in, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, but he had them in my color. He didn't have the box, so that was one thing I was, I guess, surprised about is, again, when you buy on the website, you get the boxes for everything. Um, but in his case, as he brings tools onto the truck, again, there's only so much space. So uh, in this case, he didn't have the box, but he gave me the charging cable and the, uh, and the brick that it came with. So no harm, no foul there. And so this was the second thing that I picked up. Now the third thing that I picked up is actually a consumable. So if you recall, the very first Snap-on tool I ever bought was that five-in-one butane powered soldering iron. I did a video about it in the OC140 Vito Pro Pack, which you should check out. Um, and I had been watching some videos as of late about the type of butane that you're supposed to put in there. Now, to be clear, this is all likely some sort of marketing gimmick. Um, but the butane I've been putting in there is just the stuff you get at the gas station. Uh, and the videos that I watched suggested that you need this triple filtered, yeah, triple filtered butane fuel uh, to extend its life and to get the most out of the unit. So I asked him if he had it, he said yes. And the, really the, the thing that I actually really like about this is that the little piece that it comes with there, 
that little red bit on the end is tailor made for these snap-on tools. Because um, one of the things about the uh, butane from the gas station is they give you a whole bunch of tips, but none of them really fit on there that well. Uh, and you end up making a complete mess and wasting a lot of the fuel. So I picked this up. They had a bigger one, um, but I said for now I'm just gonna get this and then I can always get the bigger one later. The next thing that I picked up was this uh, pry bar. So as you saw in my first unboxing, I picked up the straight pry bar. This, of course, not so straight. So this has got the little bend there at the end. Uh, I would say a little less than 45 degrees. Uh, and of course, I got this in the green handle, whereas the other one is in the red handle. Now, I actually have, have uh, put that red handle one in my uh, in my EDC sling. So I've been carrying that every day now for a couple weeks. Uh, and I love it. I mean, like I said, these things are um, solid, solid build quality. Um, it's everything that you would come to expect from a snap-on tool. And like I said in that video, I mean, you could be fooled into believing that this is like a toy or a promotional item that they just sort of throw away or, or give away rather. Uh, but it's not. This is made in the USA just like everything else. It's got a nice handle on it. Um, and really for my money, uh, I don't like a lot of the pry bars that are thicker at the end because I find that for me and what I'm doing, they're just not as useful. Um, did I need this one just because it has this little uh, fulcrum here, a little leverage point? No, but I was on the truck and they had it so I picked it up. The next thing that I bought was this uh, comfort grip quarter inch uh, long ratchet. Now here's the thing. At this point I now have the chrome quarter inch stubby. I've got the hard handle three quarter inch flex head and I have this comfort grip quarter inch long handle. In truth I'm still trying to figure out which handle I like the best. Now to be clear, as a professional homeowner, uh, three quarter inch is really where I exist. So did I need to buy this quarter inch ratchet? Not necessarily, but he didn't have uh, the three quarter inch one in any of the colors that I really wanted. So I decided to pick this up. It's a non-flex head, which is something that I also did want um, and just sort of add it to the collection. I think over time, uh, as I use this and the hard handle and the chrome more and more, I will come to a decision as to what I want in my box uh, long term. This does feel pretty good in the hand. I have a bigger hand, I would say, and so it is sort of fully consumed by that, whereas the hard handle gives me a little bit more, uh, I think, flexibility in the hand. So we'll see. I don't know the degree to which I love the comfort grips. Obviously, I've seen the videos and heard the stories about they get a little dirtier, they get a little worse for the wear, um, but I didn't have any, so I wanted to try it out. Uh, and this was the, what, what are we at? One, two, three. This is the fifth item that I purchased. So the quote unquote last thing that I bought before he told me about a few other things is this pen light, right? So of course this folds up, it's got a pocket clip on it, and it ultimately has three settings. So you turn it on the first time, you get a light out of the front. You turn it on the second time, you get the light from the top, lights up our workspace beautifully. And then if you click it a third time, you get a light coming out of the top. So if you were to fold it down and put it in your pocket or, or magnetize it somewhere, you have light there. One of the things that's annoying, uh, and our friend Doc over at Last Best Tool referenced this when he did his little review on this pen light, is that if you're in, say, this first position, so you have this front light on, and you want to just go from here to off, there's no way to do that. You actually have to click through, two, three, off. So that's a little annoying, but again, I'm not optimizing for efficiency in this garage, and while it's annoying, it's, it's, it's certainly not the end of the world. Now this has two magnets on it, one on the uh, bottom and one on the back, so you can clip it to whatever you want. For me, I'm thinking the combination, right, of this around the neck light, which to be clear, maybe I'll go with the astronaut up above here, um, and this, I mean, I could light up, I could light up the New York City skyline here. Uh, this, this is probably all the lighting that I really need in this garage for a long time, of course, until Snap-on comes out with some more lights and I convince myself that I need them. Now, of course, these lights are not made in the USA. These are made in China. Um, so as far as like quintessential Snap-on and whether or not you're getting the sort of full value of their brand, probably not, right? Um, because these things are priced about what you would pay for some of the USA tools, even though they're not made in the USA. Um, and of course, the warranty is different on the electronic items, right? It's only a year versus the stuff is lifetime. So. You don't get the same benefit with the lights as you do with the with the uh, with the hand tools, but I uh, I was checking out. And I saw that he had this, and I said, you know what? I literally just watched that video I'm talking about from Doc over at Last Best Tool. Which here's the thing with his channel, it's incredible, and I've watched every video. But every time you watch one of his videos, 
you come up with something new to buy. So just be very careful as you consume his content. Uh, but nonetheless, he gave this a great recommendation. He compared it to a, like a brawn or something. Um, and he's really good at breaking down the sort of intricacies of all this stuff. Um, and he sold me on it. So at this point, I had all this stuff, pulled out my credit card. Here was the first sort of downside to this trip. Uh, they don't take American Express on the truck. Now, is that a big deal? No, but is it a sort of annoyance? Yes. Uh, anyway, I pulled out a different card, but I thought that was surprising because on the website, you can use Amex no problem. So I finished checking out with all this stuff and he says, okay, go over to this box and you get yourself a sweatshirt. I said, what, a sweatshirt? He said, yeah, when you meet a certain milestone in terms of spending, our promotion right now, is that you get a sweatshirt. They have both green and black, or uh, black and red. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have my size exactly, so I went with the closest thing, and you probably saw me wearing this at the beginning of the video, but I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. It's free, and he said, well, it's not free. You had to spend some money, and I said, no, 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 but like, it's free? Uh, and he said, yeah, so I said, amazing. So I got the sweatshirt, and I said, so like, how does it work? Like, do the promotions change? You guys have other stuff going on? And he starts talking me through it and he says, and you know what, uh, right now we have another promotion going where if you buy two pairs of pliers, you get a free hat. I said, oh, so like if I buy four pairs of pliers, do I get two hats? He said, yeah. I said, where are the pliers? He goes, right up there. I didn't even see it. The, the whole time I was in the truck, I didn't even see what he was talking about until he pointed it out to me. But right next to the driver's seat in the very front of the truck was just a mountain of pliers and hats. So as you can see, I ended up buying four pairs of pliers. Uh, I got the super cool orange trucker hat, snapback, and then I went with the uh, with this one. And in fact, why don't we switch over that now? So those are the two hats that I got. Now, the thing with the pliers, same situation as before. In the green handle, he didn't really have much of what I wanted. And this is where I sort of, as I think about it more, maybe messed up a little bit. For example, he had the slip joints that I wanted, but in red handle. He had the nine inch talon grips that I wanted, but in a red handle. And I said, in the moment, I just said, you know what, I'm gonna stick with the green handle, even if it's not exactly what I want, um, because, again, I'm trying to build up my drawer, um, and I wanna stick with the same color. Now, in hindsight, should I have just picked up the arguably more useful tool? Probably, right? Um, because, you know, I'm saying to myself, well, if I had bought that talent grip, even in red, I could have put it in a different toolbox, right? It doesn't have to live in this box. If I had picked up those slip joints, I could have put them in my Vito Pro Pack or a tool or whatever. Um, but anyway, I obviously, as you can see, did not do that. So I bought these two. So this is your long nose, long handle. Um, and then this is a long nose, long handle with a bent tip, both in the green handle. Uh, these are certainly you know, more specialty type tools. Uh, so the degree to which I will make use of these is I think TBD, uh, but I'm happy to have them in the work box, uh, USA made of course, and uh, these were the first two that I picked up. Then, I was sort of running low. So they did have a set of diagonal cutters in the green handle, but I just picked up the flush cuts. I was like, oh, do I really need the diagonal cutters? I don't know. Um, now, I also bought a pair of the precision head pliers, which you didn't get to see in the unboxing because they came later, but um, I, I saw these, right? Long nose, mini handle pliers. And I said, okay, you know what? These are green handle. Um, the precision ones are obviously much thinner and they're uh, spring, uh, they have a spring in them, so they return, whereas like these, you have to sort of work in. Uh, these are a little, a little tough at the moment, but we'll, we'll work them in. I said, okay, I'm gonna get these, and I said, you know what? What's the smallest slip joint that you have? And so we're looking, and he's got the big ones, he's got the little ones. Anyway, he finally finds me this uh, in the red handle. So this is their four inch slip joint, um, and I said, okay, fine, I'm gonna take the red handle. Here's the deal. My plan is I'm gonna build a full snap-on EDC kit. Uh, so be sure to subscribe if you wanna see that video when it comes out. Uh, and I think these are going to be an integral part of that overall kit. So after that, I completed my second transaction. I got my two hats and I said, dude, I gotta get off this truck. Please don't tell my wife. Uh, and he said, oh, don't worry. Everybody says the same thing. Your secret's safe with me. And I said, beautiful. 
So I'm not gonna see him now for at least a month, but I'm very happy with all the stuff that I picked up. And of course, my wish list is still pretty long, but this is, a, this is a project for a lifetime to fill this box up with tools that I can be proud of. Uh, and like I said, when you buy a nice item, whether it's a watch or a tool or whatever, um, you never truly own it, right? You're merely looking after it for the next generation and uh, as sappy and corny as that might sound, that is how I think about this stuff, right? Um, someday, right, when if I'm fortunate enough to have a child of my own or uh, grandkids even, um, I want them to look back and say, you know what, grandpa's tools, look at them. They're in as good a shape 50 years later as they were when he bought them. He took good care of them and we're very proud uh, to make use of them ourselves. So thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.